Hey everyone, Kristen here with Softlex Company for a new episode of Free Spirit Feeding. Hello, hello. I see I have quite a few friends already on. Hey, Zach. Hi, Maria. Hi, Lilianka, Jessica. Yay, great to see you. I am um I am getting crafty today. So I'm going to talk a bit about the craftcation event, the conference that I went to last week and share with you some things I've made. And then I have a bead embroidery that I started, but wasn't able to finish. And I wanted to do that with all of you here live. Hey, Anne. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Karen. Hey, Debbie. Hi, Sunny. So beautiful to see you all. If anyone here is joining me from Craftcation, give me a little shout out in the comments, either watching live uh, in the live chat or if you're watching this on replay, just leave me a comment below and let me know. I shared this video into the Craftcation group um, just to let people know that we were here and going live. And so if anyone joins me, I'd love to say hello. So please let me know. Hi, Star. Star is tuning in from New Zealand. Hey, Jenny. Where has the day gone? I know we're halfway. Well, here I'm not quite halfway through the day on the West Coast, but definitely halfway through the day on the East Coast for sure. Let's see who else. Hi, Laura. Did I miss anybody? If I missed you, I'm sorry. Welcome, welcome. Please give me a like, a share, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're new over here. We go live on Softlex Company um, three times a week. Now we've got me on Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific time with Free Spirit Beating. We have Sarah on Wednesdays and lots of times, almost all the time, she has a guest with her. So a jewelry or crafting beading guest. Um, we have Rebecca Combs of Design and Adorn joining us this week. So that's on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can find Sarah and her creative guest. And then we have Joyce on Fridays with Spill the Beads at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Um, we also are doing live sales again. So woo we're back to live sales every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. You can find the live sale on the Softlex Company Facebook page, on our Instagram feed, as well as in the Softlex Company app and on our live sale website. You can find all the details to that over at softlexcompany.com. We have a beautiful blog that um, Thomas and Damien put together to give you all of the details on how to shop our live sales, where to find us, and that should be a good read if you are con confused or if you joined our live sale and you didn't know how to shop, like that is where you'll get all of the information. Hey, Melissa, friend Melissa is here. Good to see you. Um, what else do we got going on? We have the Great Beat Extravaganza happening this week. The kickoff is on... Uh, Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time is our preview party. And then the Great Beat Extravaganza happens all weekend long from like 8.30 a.m. Pacific time till about 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. We have some beautiful guests. You have all of your favorites. Those of us that have been doing this since the beginning, like us at Softlex Company, we've got Candy Cooper at Nostalgica. We have um, Kate from Kate Richburg from TheBeadShop.com, Abby Berta and Alex from The Bead Place, Heather Powers with Humble Beads, um, Cynthia and Azalea with Green Girl Studios and Christy Friesen, Kay Goss of Bedoria and Star Beads and Neele Patel of Silver Silk and more. Am I missing anybody of our, of our regulars? Um, and then we have our guests. So we have Katie Hacker of Beads of Courage joining us on I think she's on Saturday. And then we have, um, I'll go pull up the schedule here in just a second. And we have Lisa Niven um, of Beeducation. Let me go grab it so that I can see the actual 
see if I missed anyone. Did I remember everybody? Here we go. Jill McKay, Jill McKay. How could I forget Miss Jill? Um, and then, yes, yeah, so we have Lisa Niven Kelly of Education is our guest on Sunday and Katie Hacker with Beats of Courage is our guest on Saturday. So be sure to tune in. You can find all the presentations on the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook page. You can find most of them on the Great Beat Extrava YouTube channel. Not everyone can stream to both places. So um, you'll get most of us on YouTube, but everybody on the Facebook page. We also have a Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group that you can join. It's a little easier to find all the presentations on the page, but the group is great for um, year round uh, happenings and stuff going on, all of the extra sales and um, giveaways and things like that usually get posted into the group. And just make sure I got everybody. You can find Sarah and I with Softlex Company on Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. Pacific time for our presentation. Um, always looking forward to that. It's such a great burst of creativity, lots and lots of fun jewelry making designs, but then a few of us also share other things too. So um, we have kits. Our kit is called the Tree of Life Kit. We have sold out of the coordinating bead strand and bead mixes, but we still have some kits left. So if you haven't grabbed a kit yet, you can still grab yours. Uh, you should get it depending on where you live. If you order it within the next day or so, you should, should still have it in time for the weekend. We're located in California, so that might give you a little heads up to where um, it needs to ship to from us, but we generally get our orders out within a day or two. So, and if you don't miss it, if you don't get your kit in time for the live, you can always watch all of the presentations on replay. So um, yeah, so you can go ahead and grab that. We've got a deal happening for all of our kits right now. Spend $59 and get $10 off. When you buy a kit, you must enter the coupon code KIT, K-I-T, at checkout. And this is good for the Exotic Blooms, the Tree of Life, which is the Great Beat Extravaganza kit, and our special tea kit, which we only have about three left of the special tea kit. So that one is almost sold out. Those are the three kits that are, are included in our promotion. And then let me pop up my giveaway for today. I've got a giveaway happening here on the video. I'll choose a winner at the end I'm using the hashtag crafty. Um, so I, uh, yeah, using the hashtag crafty so that you can get a free strand of the exotic blooms bead strand that we have coordinating with our Exotic Blooms kit. That is our next mystery kit. We'll be opening up that kit at the end of April. Let's see, Dana's saying, I wasn't able to find you on YouTube. You weren't able to find me, my video right now on YouTube? Damien, will you go check and make sure that I am live on YouTube? I'm seeing a little check mark here that I am. But I do know that um, StreamYard was having some difficulty with connecting to YouTube last week when I set up the stream. So it's possible something, some lines got crossed. Damien's here in the background helping me out. Gail is over on YouTube. Hi, Gail. Sandy's also on YouTube. Lynn is seeing me on YouTube. Okay, good. There were definitely a little hiccups with the stream setup last week. Um, and they had gotten all figured out, but you know, sometimes uh <laughs> sometimes things get screwy. Okay, cool. I'm seeing quite a few of you are tuning in from YouTube. Hooray, hooray. Again, if you're joining me from Craftcation, let me know in the comments or in the live chat because I posted this um, video into the group on Facebook. And I'm just curious if anyone came to come hang out with me and see what I've got on my table today from Craftcation. I have so many things to share. So first up is my shirt. 
Look at this beautiful hand dyed poncho shirt that I picked up. I got this at Craftcation. Let me find her, um, her little business card. I know I have so many things around me. Oh, here she is. Her name is Rachel Duran and her company is called Thunder Textile. She is one of the um, teachers at Craftcation and she sells some of her stuff in the pop-up shop. So I picked up this gorgeous piece. I love it so much. Um, my cup says, this is perfect for the rainy day kit, isn't it? My cup says, when it rains, look for rainbows. Isn't that awesome? Isn't this handle just everything? <laughs> this is from a really uh, sweet friend of mine. She got me this for my birthday um, last year and I love it. Mm. Hello, Shakita. Hi, Norma. Sandy's here. Heather. And Gloria too. Oh, sorry, Dana. I know for, just for some reason you weren't able to get onto YouTube. I don't know what's going on there. It matches my necklace perfectly, doesn't it? I made this one during the um, Sundance Challenge, the Inspired by Sundance Challenge that we did with the B Place about a month or so ago, maybe February. Uh, you can find that replay on the B Place's uh, I think it's Abby Berta is the name of her YouTube channel, or you can find it on the Bead Places Facebook page. Um, and I also did a video because I made two necklaces. I think this is the one I did on the video with all of you on Softlex Company's page. And then we made some fun asymmetrical earrings to go with it. Perfect. And I got to Sundance store yesterday. I met up with Deb Floros of Deb Loves Jewelry. And how fun was that? That was so much fun. We got to peruse and do a little Sundance stroll around the store. We oohed and odd. I think the people working there were wondering what the heck we were doing. Um, <laughs> because we slowly wandered through the store and talked about the fabric and the pattern and the colors and the hem and the cut and all of it. And of course we checked out the jewelry section really closely as well. And um, that was super fun. So I'm all Sundancey this weekend. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna switch you down to my beading table because there's a lot happening over here and um, I want to share a whole bunch of stuff with you. So first up, I will take, let me take a look at, this was the business card from Thunder Textile and just show it to you a little more clearly. So if you want to go check her out, this is Rachel. She did the hand dyed goods. I haven't been able to take any of her classes yet, but I'm hoping to take them in a future craftcation because um, so beautiful. And here is just a fun explosion of things on my table from Craftcation. I've got some fun stickers. And where do I even want to begin here, actually? Okay, so one of the things I'll begin with is some of the things that's super fun about Craftcation is a lot of people bring little give little goodies to give away to people that they meet. So I played this year and I made these little affirmation, art affirmation tags. This is the one, only one I have left. It's called, I feel my feelings fully. I had people blindly pull one out of my little baggie and they got um, to see if their message resonated with them. So this is all mixed media um, paint and collage and paint pens and all that stuff. And then I just put my kristenfagan.com website on the back. So this was like a really last minute thing I did. I did it the night before I left. I wanted to have something to hand out to people. And I kind of forgot the first two days to even do it. And then by the last um, day or two, I gave away all of the things that I had. So 
in that vein, I sat next to the wonderful Pam in one of my classes and she gave me this super cute pin. And she's called Make Me Creative, mn.com. So this was a little freebie she just gave to me. I sat next to her in the wire wrapping class and um, that was so cute. This is another little freebie that I got from Olivia when I was in the elevator with her. And this is, she makes um, handmade accessories for your pet and for you. So this is a little scrunchy, super cute. Of course, I plucked out the rainbow one and she's called Saucy Scarves by Olivia Zell. How sweet was that? So that was really fun. She's actually the first person that I gave one of my tags to because she gifted me the scrunchie in the elevator, which reminded me that I had these little tags. And so, um, so that was sweet. So I got that from her. This, I don't know her name. This was during the fun dance party. These are made, these are snails and the dance party was, um, called the Enchanted Forest. These were made with a 3D printer. How freaking cool is that, right? Um, and so I got one of these. I'm sorry, I don't know your name who gifted this to me. So if you happen to watch the video, say hello. Let us know that you were the person that had the printed snails. These were such a hit. There's so many different colors, super cool. I do not even know how this is working. I don't know how this was created. And I love that. Some other free things I've got here. I've got so many things in the swag bag. Um, we had a, a little make and take in the one of the hotel rooms that did some artist trading cards. Does anyone know what artist trading cards are? They're usually like this little size, kind of the size of like a playing a deck of playing cards. And you create little art pieces on them and artists tend to trade them. So you were able to make one and keep the one you made, or you can hang yours that you made on a little um, display and trade with someone else. So I made one and I left mine to trade with someone else. I just noticed that this person, Raquel Brizzy at Raquel Creates, signed the back and added her um, little Instagram, which was super smart. I did not think to do that at all. I just created it and hung it up there with nothing noted on it. <laughs> But this was the Alice in Wonderland themed room and this was so much fun. And I love that I got a little artist trading card from there. So this is just to show you how generous and lovely the crafting community is um, and all of the fun things. These are not even part of, technically part of the conference. These were just little extra things happening while I was there. This was a beautiful little um, charm bracelet happening in one of the rooms. And these two charms I picked up, you were able to pick up two charms and a tassel and they give you this chain. And then I'm gonna add, I added these two dangles here and I'm gonna add a few more to complete my bracelet. Super cute. I don't remember the name of this room. I apologize for that. So if you're here watching and you do remember the name of this room, you can shout out to who did this one. That was great. And now let's get down to some of the stuff that I actually made in the conference. I'm gonna move these little beads over. I was teaching. So it was a little different for me. This is my second year there. The first year I went with Sarah and we were just went as attendees. So I feel like I made a little bit more that time because I was teaching this year. And so I didn't get to take as many classes, but I taught how to make these cute little soft flex earrings. And if you placed an order with us last week, that was over $39, you would have gotten a little kit in your package as well so that you can make your own little teardrop or double uh, circle earrings. I made more of the teardrops because they're a little bit easier um, to get the shape down and than the double hoops were, but they're so sweet. They come in all the fun little colors of soft legs and look at how easy you can make these, right? Those are just with the one bead. 
which they were stars and flowers. So you could have gotten stars or you could have gotten flowers. And then this is what that same teardrop shape would look like if you added a few more beads to it. And you just still let the wire kind of show and be part of the fun. And then I also pulled these out from my little stash of things I've made in the past, just to show like what it would look like if you beat it up the whole side even more. And in this case, this was one of those double circle ones. So it was this style, just my circles are a little bit different in size. And I went ahead and added some Delica beads up the side there. So there's lots of ways you can take that technique and then keep expanding on it with different beads and um, or just doing something like this where you add some extra loops in there so that you've got a little more of a sculptural sculptural style design, but it's the same concept of putting it together. So I taught two sessions of this. I taught 150 people how to crimp and use soft flex beading wire. And it was just really a lot of fun. It was really, really cool. I made these, look at how cute this is. I think I might add a little bit more to it still, but this was um, Beacon Glue was there at the conference and I was able to make these sweet hair clips with of course some mushy mushrooms on there. There were mushrooms everywhere and I made two. I've got one with a turquoise mushroom and one with a red mushroom. So sweet. I think this one will be uh, sent off to Miss Sarah because she loves turquoise. And I was thinking of her while I was there. Sad she wasn't with me. So I made that for her. I also picked this up for her. We talked about this in the last video last week. And um, this was one of those vintage paper Ephiria packs and it has all these little bits and baubles in here little pieces of vintage um, and So that is from PG craft cottage at etsy.com that is um What Sarah asked me to grab her while I was there. She remembered it from last year this is the wire wrapping class I took. So I did this one with Sandra Dotson. You guys might remember we had her on a beading party last year after um, craftcation. I think it might have been in the summertime, somewhere around that, or maybe it was in the spring. And we did a wire wrapped heart with her and did some wire weaving. And this year I took this class because I wanted to learn how to do the tree of life um, well, she just called it a tree wire wrap, but I kind of wanted to learn how to do some of this wire work. And I thought it went along so well with our tree of life kit that's happening for the great beat extravaganza. Um, so I was really excited about it. And you can add beads to it. You could do different colors of wire. I think we ended up with um, four strands that we were using to wrap through just because of time constraints, but you can do more than that so that your tree can be thicker and have more branches. So I think it's a great uh, project that I learned to start from and then we'll see what, um, what can grow from there. So stay tuned, I'll probably do a wire project in the future. And I'd also love to have Sandra come back on if she wants to. I'm gonna share, um, I'm gonna share my screen for a second and just show you. She's just got a couple of kits that she sells. And so you can find her beginner wire weaving kit, her wire wrapped uh, heart pendant that I learned last year or doing some interlocking circles over on her website, Entangled Co. I just wanted to give her a shout out because she was our um, presenter. She used Softlex Craft Wire in this product. And so 
go check her out at Entangled Co. Thank you, Sandra, for teaching this project using Softlex Craftwire. It was really sweet to be able to take this class with you. She used um, 18 gauge and I think it was 26. 26 gauge and 18 gauge were the two wires. You'll see this is the back. So here's the 18 gauge is for the bail and this frame. And then 26 is what we use to do all of the tree wrapping. So cool. And I bet you could do that on all different shapes. And now for what I wanted to share with you all, I wanted to do some bead embroidery with you today. Have any of you done bead embroidery? This is my moth that I started in the class with Allison. Allison is from um, Make It Work Crafts. Her name is Allison Toon Aguilar. And you can find her at Make It Work underscore crafts on Instagram. And she taught this class. We had a lot of fun. We got a piece of paper to draw out our design idea. So this is sort of where I started. And then I just kind of put the, I just drew in like the head and very lightly some ideas for the wings and then went to town. So I didn't draw too much on my embroidered sheet. You can also put this, um, I cut it out into a circle so that I could put it behind and kind of look at where I wanted to position things, especially since I picked a very, very light yellow uh, fabric that made that part easy. A lot of the fabric was darker or thicker and you wouldn't be able to put this up behind it, but I thought maybe I'd like to do that. So I chose a lighter fabric. We used, in the class, we used um, this kind of thread. I think it's called embroidery thread. And we had to kind of pull it apart and pull, pull these down to just get one or of the um, pieces because otherwise it's way too thick. So that's what I started with. And you'll see that's what's going on back here. However, I'm going to go and switch with all of you to the Mayuki thread. It is a moth. Yes, it is a moth. Um, so I'm going to use the Mayuki beading thread that we have here at Softlex Company in the gold color. So that should disappear quite nicely with the yellow that I'm working with. And I did learn how to use my... my threader, my beading thread threader. So I know a couple of you were asking last time because we were struggling about how to <laughs> add the bead threader. And so many of you were so nice to tell me that I had a bead threader in my <laughs> in my little John bead uh, beading needle pack, but I didn't know how to use it. So now I know how to use it. I taught myself before I went to Craftcation to work on this, to work on the earrings that we were doing. And then when I got there, I was laughing because I was like, oh, perfect. Here it is again for me to learn. So I'm just gonna show you quickly how to put it on. Yes, it was you, Maria, that said you wanted, um, <laughs> you wanted me to show you. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of wire off with my new scissors. Look at these. They are very sharp and these came in the swag bag from Craftcation. So I'm so excited about this. So now I have a cool pair of new needle scissors. Oh, and speaking of the swag bag, those of you that were there at the conference, we put in a spool of Softlex purple beading wire along with a beautiful postcard to show you of some ways you can use the product. And you can scan this QR code to come right here to our YouTube channel and see hundreds of tutorials. We also put a 
coupon on the back side of this postcard. So if you got this in your swag bag, look at the back, you'll have a coupon that you can use on our website that's good until the end of May. So May 31st is when you have to use that buy. Just wanted to point that out in case anyone got their swag bag but didn't quite open it. I can be kind of notorious for that. Once I get home, it's like there's so many things. <laughs> you, uh, It's hard to, to know what's in there. That thing was jam-packed this year. All right, so I've got a little bit of my thread. I've got my needle, and then I have my threader. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the needle through the threader. I'm going to take that tip, which is very soft and pliable, and just slide it onto my needle so that my needle goes down to the end here. And now that's attached. And then I'm gonna slide my thread through the nice big hole that's right there. So that's attached, easy peasy. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come back. This is the hardest part, is like pulling it out of this little tip here. And now my thread is on my needle and I just go past that little tail and then I can pull this off. Oh my gosh, how much easier is that than the half hour we spent struggling to thread a needle <laughs> two weeks ago? <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? It was like magic. I can't believe I've never known this before. So when you buy our pack of needing, beading needles at softlexcompany.com, you will get one of these in that pack. Easy peasy. So much better. I'm not sweating. I'm not cursing under my breath. <laughs> hey, Terry, I'm glad you found us. I'm sorry Facebook did not let you know. Naughty, naughty. So I threaded my thread already on my needle. I did about um, a little bit more than my one arm span. And then I doubled it up and made two knots at the bottom, two overhand knots. And then I fed my needle through so it comes out on the top side here. And now we got to figure out what, what beads to use. I also have a little piece of beeswax because a few of you mentioned using beeswax um, or you could use a thread conditioner would help it not be so curly. And I did do that before the video. I just ran this on my, on my thread and I tried not to be too, um, too hard with it because some of you said that if I was too hard, the thread might kind of curl up even more like a ribbon. And you'll see it just sort of relaxed it a little bit. It's still got some curl, but it's definitely not as curly as it was. Sherry says you can use that on the sewing machine if you don't have an auto threader too. Oh, good to know. Yeah, I definitely don't have a sewing machine. Sewing is, this is the, this is the, like the last frontier is using thread and needle and then possibly sewing in the future, right? Yes, I'm using the Mayuki thread. I use the embroidery thread with the project to start with in the class, but I switched to the Mayuki thread now that I'm home and I think this will disappear really well with the project. Witchcraft, says Anne, <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> So let's go pull out some beads here. I've got um, I've got all of our Delica beads. Let's pull out some fun colors and see what we might want to use. This bright orange is kind of fun. There's this beautiful purple, which I've already got kind of blues and greens happening, so purple could be nice. There's a nice dark blue. I do have a lot of dark blue already going on, but that might be nice if I want a little bit of it. The same for that green. I think maybe I'll play with those. 
There's a silver. Oh, white could be pretty. All the colors. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm, other than red and black, I pulled out all the colors. <laughs> We have these trios too, so I could pull from one of these if I want to, like this kind of peachy, corally color is kind of fun. This is a darker, um, it's kind of, what do they call this one? Dusty mauve, yeah, that makes sense. That's a dusty mauve. And then we also have the vintage holiday, which is what Joyce was using on Friday. And that has more of um, this green, but it's like got more sparkle to these. This one's almost like on the teal side of things. This one's kind of a plum color or wine color. They call it fancy lined copper. Huh. I wasn't expecting that. And then there's some gold too. Okay, let's narrow it down. Let's narrow it down. So between the greens, there's a truer green or more of a teal. I kind of am leaning towards that one. And then between the purples, there's this deeper purple or the truer purple. And I think I'm leaning, this one's called, oh, these have the same, no, that's dusty mauve and that's dark mauve. I think I'm leaning towards the truer purple. And then as of the orange or the coral, I think I'm leaning towards the coral. What do you guys think? Um, it's a toss up for me on this one. I know, I know. I'm totally thinking about throwing them all on the moth. <laughs> I think I'll keep the white because that might be fun as a, like a little pop of brightness. Coral, 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 coral. All right, so we'll get the orange out of there. I think these four and the white are fun to play with. And then I also pulled out some other beads. These little ceramic rondelles I thought were cute. The bead size for these are Delica size 11. They're Mayuki Delica size 11. You could find them at um, softlexcompany.com. We have some that you can buy individually. I think all of these, except for the coral, you can buy individually. The coral is part of the Red Rose Tea Trios pack. So I have those, but I also have these, which are pretty fun too. Do you guys like the ceramic or do you like the gold? And the reason I wanna use something like this, like a spacer rondelle is um, I'm gonna bring up this little embroidery stitch guide that Allison put together at Make It Work. The gold, yeah, the gold I think is, is jumping out, right? So I thought this was really sweet. I'm gonna share this page with you for just a second. It's called, uh, this is the makeitworkcrafts.com website. This is where Allison is, the teacher of the class I took. And she put together this beaded embroidery stitch guide. Now they're not labeled, so I don't know what any of the names of these stitches are called, but she just did this as a way to visually see some ideas of either um, one bead at a time, doing like a string of beads, doing these rondelles, little cluster, which I think is so cute. 
showing what it looks like if you've got a bead and then a little seed bead on top, if you wanna make them a little more 3D. And then you've got the bugles. Again, there's some discs rondelles, some sort of free form little ideas, the chevron pattern. So I thought that was really nice. Yes, Sherry, I can put a color on top. That's a good idea. So I had another idea too. This is hard, right? When you have so many ideas. Um, if I didn't use the gold ones, what if I put these flowers in here? Do they look cute or are they too big for the space? We've got them in that color. Or a pink color. A few of you are saying too big on the flowers. That's what I wasn't sure. I was like, I, I didn't have that in hand when I was a... Uh, Shakita likes the flowers. Sherry thinks they're adorable, but Lynn, um, Sherry, and Miss Kathy think they're too big. Yeah, a few of you say they're too big. I'll have to keep them for another idea, I guess. That would be cute to do a little garden with these flowers, wouldn't it? And then you do the beaded, um, you could do like the beaded stems and leaves. So we still like the gold ones better. I've also got these arabesque beads, which could be interesting in here. They probably have to go this way. Garden idea is cute. What color was the pinkish flower? Oh, I don't know. I don't know all the names of these. It was this one. It's got like a gray blue background with pink, metallic-y pink on it. And then there was also this one I showed that is, is more of a copper wash. Oh, now you're getting real fancy, Terry, with each wing representing a season. That's kind of fun, isn't it? And then I can kind of fill in with the Delica beads around it. Or maybe push this one a little bit further down and then I could fill in with Delica beads between. <laughs> All of the ideas, none of the execution. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I'm feeling. <laughs> that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is this gonna be, I feel like, oh yeah. That fell right in the middle. So these little Delica beads are too small to go on top of those for spacer. But I like the idea of putting another bead there. I have like a teeny tiny crystal. But I kind of like that you can see, maybe I'll just put it down first and then think about it. I like that they're like, they look like little eyes 
because right doesn't a lot of moths and stuff have like those markings where they do look like their eyes so let's start with this side and let's add Maybe I'll add a little bit of these white ones just to brighten it up a little to start. Now I'm gonna have to get one of those bead spinners. Do you guys have those things? <laughs> if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be doing stuff like this, now I need a bead spinner. You know how many trade shows I've been to where I've seen that wonderful bead spinner lady hard at work spinning that thing, showing how to get all those beads on there. And it just, I never thought to get one. So now I'm trying to decide which way I want to make these. Do I want to go short side or long side? I feel like long side. So one of the things I learned is called couching where you'd make this long, that's what I did for all of these. I didn't do it perfectly because I'm still learning. I haven't done this very often. But what you do is you create a long strand and then you come back and you kind of go up and over to hug some of those beads down. Oh, you do have to use a curved needle. Okay. I don't know how to switch the needle after they are strung. Oh, I like that idea of a bunch of delicas around the um, around the gold spacer. I'm going to have to try that. Does anyone have any ideas for Terry what to do about the curved the curved needle situation with the bead spinner. So when I'm red, when I feel like I have enough on there, I'm just gonna poke my needle back down into my embroidery and pull that like that. And now to couch it, which I might be okay actually, but I'll just do it to show you. To couch it, you would come up and I, you know, if I'm doing this wrong, that's all right. Bear with me. I'm just going to come up a few beads down, pull my string, and then go around my strand, hopefully hugging it in a place where it goes between the beads like that. And so now this is a little more, uh, a little more stable than just the one embroidery where it was loose. And I'll do one more on this side. I'm just gonna go up here. And then down. And just sort of hugs that strand. And if you can get it between beads, that's probably ideal because then you don't see it. Could you also run through groups of beads and anchor the segments? I think so. I think you could.
So let's find a spot for this guy. And I wanna leave some space around him to maybe try and put some delicas around. Let's do right there. And so for this one, I'm gonna go to one side, come up through, go to one side, and anchor that side down, and then come up through the middle again, and anchor the other side down. Oh, I got caught on this big bead in the middle here. Be careful where your thread goes. And since this is pretty heavy, So I'm going to do north, south, east, west. Since this is a pretty heavy bead. Kathy says, this would look great on the back of a jean jacket. Oh my gosh, yes. Actually have some jean jackets I've been hoarding because I wanna paint them. And now I might have to add some beads too. Here's what's going on in the back. I'm just gonna um, tug on a few of these because I feel like for some reason, there we go. We've got like a little Lucy one here. And I wanna get that down. That's better. Yay, we've got a strand of speeds and we've got <laughs> and we've got a little rondelle on there. So let's next, let's put this on here next, and then I could fill in with the delicas, right? So we could play around with how we want this one to go. I think I like it better pointing up. <gasps> Lois, did you say you could even fit into your jean jacket from high school? That's so exciting. <laughs> Eileen says, oh no, another craft to learn. I missed the beginning. Yeah, well, I already had started the this project at Craftcation, but really the only thing I didn't show was that you get a piece of fabric and you have to have this embroidery hoop. And then you put you open up the embroidery hoop, it's two pieces. I'll show you on the back. Here's like the one piece and here's the other piece. And you put the fabric in between. You pull it down nice and taut. And then I tightened up this little uh, screw up here to get it real as tight as I wanted it to be. And then everything else I sort of, uh, it did show how to needle, put the thread on the needle and stuff like that. But I'm gonna come up over here onto this side of this arabesque bead, which we sell these at Softlex Company. These are Czech glass bead. Super fun uh, little detail on that. So I think it's gonna be pretty using that here. And then I'm gonna come back down on an angle 
and be careful not to pick up all of your other beads like I just did. Thank goodness. I'm getting more patient. Look at that. I love it. Okay, so where do I wanna go from here? So I just came out of that one there. I think. I think I'll go up here because I don't have too much string left. So let me go up here and kind of fill in this spot. What color do I want to put there? I think I'm going to do some of the white again. I like how bright that white is. I like the idea of being kind of free flowing with it. After I'm done with it, I'm just gonna hang it up somewhere. It's like, a, it's a little work of art. And be proud of my new creation and my new skill or my new trying, at, trying a new skill. <laughs> <laughs> This was a hot class for craft creation too. A lot of people tried to get into this class and I was really lucky that I got a spot. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder. So because I, Look, it's got a little bit of um, of a loop because I didn't go out far enough when I went down through. But I think that's okay. I'm just going to pull it. Maybe I'll go this way and pull it down this way. And it'll have a little bit of a 3D effect. Jessica hung her bead embroidered butterfly over her bed. Aw, that's so sweet. What size was it, Jessica? This one's pretty small. Does it say what size this is? Oh yeah, it's a five inch, it's a five inch hoop. Heather says it would look great on a basket purse. Oh my gosh, what a fun idea. Okay, dogs are gonna bark. My son's coming in the door. Just a heads up if they, oh, they're quiet. They're quiet today. They must be fast asleep. So to not have that loop there, I should probably hold my beads down so I know where they're ending and then go ahead and pull my, my thread through. And now it's a little tighter. I didn't do that with this one. I should have held them down first. One thing too I noticed when I was in class, I... I accidentally grabbed a hold of this a few times because when I'm picking this up, this kind of folds over and got in my way. And then I ended up uh, <laughs> beating right on there. So I almost think it might be good to cut this a little bit shorter so you don't have as much fabric flapping around in the wind here um, so that you're not as easily, if that happens to you, then maybe cut some of that fabric off. I'm being a little more mindful of it because I had to kind of backtrack a few times.
Now I'm trying to decide if I should keep going in white or if I should switch it up, go this way. Maybe I'll do white around this way and then switch it up to a different color over here. I like how the white is really um, a nice contrast with the bead, the darker beads that I had chosen in the beginning. And this was the teacher's suggestion was to outline it first and then go in and fill in the inside. So that's why you see I've got all of the outline parts done. And now I'm just going in to fill in the inside, being somewhat freeform with it. Sherry says, I took a Ralph Lauren linen fabric, outlined the flowers with seed beads, and made a purse out of it. It was a stress reliever, and I still have it. That sounds so lovely. We were in... Deb and I, after Sundance, we went over to Anthropology because there was one of those stores right in the same shopping center that we were in. And um, they had some really pretty embroidered dresses that they had like, kind of like what you're saying, Sherry, they had like a pretty flower um, fabric and then they did the embroidery on there. It was super nice. And now I'm probably going to start seeing like bead embroidery everywhere I go, right? <laughs> Whereas before I probably didn't pay any attention to it. Okay, so where I'm at right now, I think I'm going to create some knots and then string up a new area of wire, of string, I mean, because, um, or thread rather. So I'm just taking making a loop, taking my needle through, and making an overhand kind of knot. I hold my knot finger where the knot is started, and then I just pull on the tail, and that way the knot will be nice and tight to my piece. But if I waited any longer, I wouldn't have been able to get that needle kind of through there. And then I'll snip off that. It is very relaxing to do this. Let me grab another, um, another length and let's think about what color we wanna put around here. We could do the green or the purple or the coral, maybe the corals needed to brighten that up. So I'm using my, my Yuki thread again. I'm gonna pull a length that's the size of my arm and a little bit longer, like towards my, across my chest here. And then I'm gonna get my needle threader. And I'm gonna feed the tip of the threader onto the eye of the needle, pushing the needle all the way down to the end. And then I'll grab my thread, put it through the nice center, have a little bit of a tail. and then take the needle and push it off the threader onto the thread, going past the tail, and then I can pull it off. And then I'm going and I'm making a double, I went ahead and doubled it up, so I have one long strand that I'm doubling
I know I lost you again. My internet's just been kind of bad lately. I don't know what's going on in our neighborhood. Um, but the last couple of weeks, we've definitely been dropping. So hopefully our service provider is getting it worked out. Easy peasy. And then I'm just double knotting down at the end. Double overhand knot. Trimming off some of that excess. And then I can start on my next. Going up through the bottom to the top here. I think I'll start, maybe I'll start in this corner and try and go around this rondelle. It's almost a little too close. I don't know how that happened. I tried to leave space, but it got a little too close on the one end. So maybe I'll do like a rainbow, just like a half loop around. Which color did we decide? <laughs> oh, a critter had gnawed the wire. That's not good. I actually think we might be due for a new router is probably what's going on. Our router's a little bit old, but you do never know. You never know. We definitely have critters here, so it's possible. We decided on coral, right? Okay. Thanks, Sylvie. We're not going to finish this together because obviously this is time-consuming, uh, time-consuming work, but I do want to kind of try and get one side of the wing closer to being done. And if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, use the hashtag crafty and I'll pick a winner at the end of the video. Look at how cute. I just need a couple more to make it all the way through. Do you think I should keep going with all of them and then just couch it down, like tighten it up? Probably, because I feel like when I tried to do it less than that and it just kind of it doesn't keep that round shape as well. Yeah, it's definitely a moth. It's a moth, it's a moth. Moth is my symbol of the year. So I've been really playing around with mothy things a lot. I usually pick a, a word of the year too, but I haven't this year. Um, I was thinking nourish, which kind of goes along with my moth too. But I'm playing with the idea of not having a word and just having a symbol this year. Sherry says, you may want to tack it down every five beads. Oh, gosh, that's so many. So many tacking. <laughs> that's good to know, though. I'm going to try and take it around here. The inpatient crafter. I don't know about that every five beads. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how cute. So now I'm going to go and do that little couching thing again, I think. So I'm going to come up over here. 
Oh, did I do it? Look what I did. See, I was just talking about this. <laughs> it was like I had to do it just because I was talking about it. Oh, man. So now I have to pull this back out. Thankfully, this uh, material was very thin and easy to work with. Now I have to do that again here. Son of a gun. I had to take my own advice and cut these thing, these pieces off. Okay, back in action. Well, now you know what I meant <laughs> when I said when I said that that thing was getting caught. Now you know what I meant. All right, let's go here. Isn't that funny? Look at how that's flopping around. And then, so if you didn't tack it down, it would definitely end up flopping around. Okay, I got one. I'm gonna go up kind of in the middle here of that of that loop. Patty says, I'm excited to see the finished work. It's so pretty so far. Thank you. I feel like doing a butterfly or a moth or a dragonfly, like you can't go wrong, right? Because they have such pretty um, colors and shapes and they're really always lovely. <gasps> Yay! So I just need to kind of fill in here like a little triangle of sorts or maybe do another like half loop here or there and in here and then I'll have one wing I'll have one wing done these were cute weren't they these are like little drop beads that I thought were fun to add to the bottom there so this is probably a project that you can kind of start and stop pretty easily I like that you can just take your needle and punch it into your fabric here and now it's ready to pick up again whenever you want to keep going. I don't know, I'm people did finish their bugs. I don't know how they did because I am super slow. <laughs> but let's go ahead and pick a winner. Thanks you guys for joining me today and helping me with picking out all of the fun beads and ideas uh, on where to go with this, with this moth. I'm excited to keep it going. Lynn says she thinks she'd like to do one that had definite veins and then fill in around them. That's a great idea. Cause then you can, yeah, just like if you were doing like a leaf or something, really get the, the outline and the veins in there and then fill in. Yes, Caroline, all those bead soups can be a creation with fabric for sure. Hi, Fran. Fran says that's way cool. I'm just gonna scroll up and see if I missed any comments. Caroline says you could even add flower fabric fabric like mentioned before. I think that's a great idea. I 
Eileen says, you're not slow. You think about what you want. Thank you. I'm being thoughtful, not slow, right? <laughs> My doggy is dancing. <laughs> Look at this bead soup tray. I just poured all of a few things in, in from um, some bowls I had into one tray because I was like, I need to know. And some of these are like pendants and stuff that I just haven't used in a design yet or all of these little bits of wire that I did that I haven't used in a design yet. But isn't this fun? It's like a little treasure trove. All right, let's go and choose our winner. Oh my gosh. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Let me make sure I spell it correctly. Keep them coming, keep them coming. I think when my internet dropped off. I lost a few of you. So I'll give you a few more minutes to just re-enter if you entered earlier. Do it again. The, the system will automatically knock out a duplicate if it's there. Um, so just go ahead and do it now and uh, do hashtag crafty and we'll get some fresh entries in here. And I got to look into getting a new router or something because it's been happening the last couple of weeks a lot. What a fun use of those arabesque beads. I think it would be great in a dragonfly, a moth, a butterfly, even a beetle maybe. So cool. All right, I got 50 entries. I have 89 of you here watching with me live. So if you, if you, even if you did it earlier, just enter again with hashtag crafty and I will choose opener in just a moment. A mushroom. Yes, Sherry. Oh my gosh. I was like, I should have, I should have submitted the mushroom um, craft wire piece we did for the sun catcher that we did on the video. Should have submitted that as a class because there were mushrooms everywhere. Oh, is there a huge cicada hatching this year, Terry? We need some cicada projects. Ooh. I will have to keep my eyes out for some ideas on some cicada projects. I didn't know there was a huge hatching this year. We don't see cicadas here in Arizona, but I grew up with them back on Long Island. So I always remember them. I love their little shells that they leave when they, mm, on the trees and whatnot. Trillions, says Lynn. Oh my gosh, trillions. That's intense. Lois says, I think it only happened so many years. Trillions. Oh, Teresa's from Huntington. Yes, I'm from Hicksville, Teresa. So I'm really close. I'm really close to you. I actually went to an art school in Huntington when I was a kid in, uh, in high school. <laughs> Sherry says cicada stitching yes live no <laughs> Elizabeth you see them all the time in Tucson maybe I'm just not looking in the right place I don't feel like I ev have ever seen them I've lived here for 24 years 25 years and um yeah it, I think it was the art league I don't remember I was only like maybe 15 or 16. It was like a summer um, life drawing class that I took there in Huntington. Oh gosh, Miss Kathy, that sounds interesting. She wants to encase a shell in resin, kind of like when, how you see the scorpions and stuff in resin, right? 
They hatch right before the monsoon storm, says Elizabeth. So I'll have to look for them this summer during monsoon season. Wow. All right, let's choose our winner. And I'm going to have to take a look into this whole cicada thing a little more. I've never seen them here. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? Anastasia over on face on YouTube, I mean. Sorry, Anastasia. Are you here? Let us know in the comments that you're still here. Hooray, hooray. Congratulations. Teresa says, yes, they have wonderful programs. It probably was that. My mom was talking about it just recently with me, how I wouldn't show her any of the things I was making because it was a life drawing class and I was like a young teenager and it was embarrassing <laughs> for me. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't remember that. <laughs> hooray, hooray, Anastasia, there she is. I see that you're here. Please go ahead and send us an email at info at softlexcompany.com and let us know your shipping address and we will get one of our exotic blooms bead strands out to you. And if you haven't yet and you want to pick up that um, exotic blooms kit, this is for anybody, uh, you go ahead and spend $59 or more. You will get $10 off your order when you have a kit in your cart enter the coupon code KIT at checkout. And that includes our exotic blooms, our tree of life and our special tea kits, which the special tea kits are almost gone. The exotic blooms will be opening the end of April and the tree of life will be our great bead extravaganza kit that we will be sharing next weekend. So mark your calendars. 1 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday for Sarah and I for the Great Beat Extravaganza presentation. And then we've also got our wonderful guest, Rebecca Combs of Design and Adore, and doing a Kumihimo project with all of you to uh, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time and Joyce on Friday at 9.30 a.m. with Spill the Beads. She's doing part two of her necklace that she started last week, which those adorable Delica beaded flowers, and she also did some hammering for a butterfly pendant. I'm excited to see where her design goes this Friday. Um, and then if you're interested in checking out our live sale, please come hang out with us on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time. We'll have our next live sale this Thursday. And um, you can just come and watch. Or if you want to shop, we have all of the instructions on our website at softlexcompany.com. Or you can just come and hang out with us and watch and um, see what kind of treasures we have in our live sale this week. Love to you all. TGB is wonderful, says Teresa. Hooray. I can't wait. I can't believe it's like they're they just come up on me out of nowhere nowadays. It's so funny. Um, I'm just like, whoa, that's this weekend. I gotta get my kit and I gotta figure out what I'm doing with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably work on that today. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everyone. I will see you uh on Saturday and then I will probably not see you next Monday because I usually tend to take the Monday after the weekend off because I'll be hanging out with you guys all weekend long in the comments as well as during our presentation for the Great Beat Extravaganza. All right. See you all soon. Bye.